Hello Corkies! If you're looking for an awesome, easy, do-at-home drink for the holidays that'll keep you nice and warm, I'm going to show you how to make a mulled wine or a spiced wine, so stick around for the recipe. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to CorkandJava.com, where your go-to place for coffee and wine reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to expand and enrich your experience with all of your favorite beverages. Make sure you guys hit subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified when all our future videos come out. So today, I am making mold wine, and if you're um, doing the closed captioning, it's M-U-L-L-E-D, so mold, not like mold, M-O-L-D wine. Um, so it's a spiced wine. It's um, it's like pizza. You can top it with whatever your preference is for flavors. There's not really any wrong way to do it, but there's like a few components to making mold wine or spiced wine that are more traditional. So that's what I'm going to show you is just some of the traditional things that people use to make mold wine. It's a really popular Christmas drink. Um, it's really popular in Europe. Um, apparently in some of the Christmas markets and European markets that they have, um, this is just like, it's like a bottle of water. You have your mold wine, you're good to go. So um, here are the ingredients I'm going to be using. I have, um, I'm going to use a Merlot. You can use any red wine that you prefer. Um, I've seen people use um, Cab Sauvs. I've seen uh, Pinot Noirs. I'm going to use a Merlot. Uh, I am going to use the Cognac as my... Uh, fortifying um, liquor. Uh, you can use rum, you can use whatever your preference is. Um, cranberries is a perfect fall winter fruit, so I'm going to use these as well as an orange and a lemon. And then um, as far as spices and stuff are concerned, I'm going to use cinnamon stick and whole cloves. I've also seen tons of um, the star anise and all sorts of um, raisins and like all sorts of other things that you can put in this. So um, ca uh, cater it to your likings, tailor it to what you like, um, but this is just what I'm going to use. So uh, here we go. I'm going to put in, I'm going to make it for like a serving of about two people. So I'm only going to use about half of this bottle from Merlot and I have this have this on low heat a little bit more okay okay and so I have the stove on um, this is just gonna simmer you don't want it to boil or anything like that because you're gonna just all the alcohol is gonna go away so unless you don't want an alcoholic mold wine <laughs> um, so I have my wine, I'm gonna add just a little bit of granulated sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness. Just maybe like a fourth cup, if that. I'm not usually too precise with my measurements. I like to eyeball a lot of things, but for you guys, I will measure this out. So yeah, it's just about a fourth cup. Get that dissolved. All right, and then I'm gonna cut up my orange and my lemon and you could you know zest it you could peel it and spritz it like whatever you want to do I'm just gonna take the easy way out on this and just throw the whole orange slices in here let it extract some of that flavor and do the same thing with my lemon Then I'm gonna add just like a handful of cranberries. All right, and then I'm gonna put in a stick of cinnamon if I can open it. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add some whole cloves, just a few of those. I've seen people also like take the cloves and stick them into the orange and like make a like a crock pot version of this. 
if you're wanting to do this for a lot of people. So you could definitely do that. So yeah, just mix it around. You don't have to muddle it like too intensely, but definitely like press down the oranges and the lemons to get some of the flavors, the juices extracted, and the cranberries. And then I would just let this simmer for like five to 10 minutes or so, get it nice and warm. Again, not too strong. And then at the end, I'll pour in a little bit of the brandy and then take it off the heat. Okay, so while I'm waiting, I'll go ahead and cut a few more slices of the lemon and orange just to throw them in there as a garnish. Um, if you want to keep this, you can keep this in your fridge in an airtight container for a few days. I wouldn't drink it past that too much, just like any wine, it'll oxidize and lose the flavor. So, um, But if you do make a big batch or something and end, not, end up not drinking it, you can keep it in the fridge for a few days. Okay, I'm just about ready to take it off. I'm just gonna do a quick temperature check. The ideal temperature for serving hot drinks is about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, at about 170, you start burning off the alcohol. So you wanna make sure that if you're doing the stovetop method, you don't get it past that for too long or else all your good alcohol is just gonna go out the window here. Um, 150 is, you know, not scalding hot. You're not gonna burn the roof of your mouth. Still be nice and warm. Yeah, we're getting up there we're about 130 right now. All right, so I've got my garnishes prepared. I've got my cognac ready to pour in. Um, we've steeped this for about five to 10 minutes and we're about 150. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to it and then cut the heat. So I'm just gonna do about like a fourth cup. Don't have to get too crazy, and like I said, you can use whatever your preference is. All right. And if you have a strainer, you can definitely strain this so you're not getting little pieces of clove and all of that in your cup. And if you are using a crock pot method, I've seen that it's really popular to do the crock pot method. I would, if you just have a keep warm setting, I would just use that instead of cooking it on low for a few hours. I don't know how that doesn't burn all the alcohol out um, of the wine because they're generally higher than 170 degrees. Um, so, and this is really quick, really easy. Um, it's great for, you know, if you're just drinking a few glasses or if you um, and another person you can obviously easily double this. You have like another couple come that is coming over to drink or have a party. I have my glass. I'm just going to throw a few pieces of orange and lemon in here. Nope, not going to be able to model it. Let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess. Probably not. All right, so I've poured more in here. I'm just gonna grab some more cranberries. So it's a nice little garnish. Perfect for Christmas time, mold or spiced wine. All right, so now we get to try it. Y'all know I don't really like hot drinks very often, but this is not hot and like it's just warm and it's just perfectly fruity and smooth and perfect for a cold day. And it was a very cold day today. So this is great after being outside. Love it. Um, if you like to make mold wine at home, leave me a comment with what you like to add into it. I'd love to do variations of this recipe. Some people add orange juice, like all sorts of fun things. So uh, leave a comment with what you like in your spiced wine or mold wine. Also, make sure that you guys find us on Pinterest, on Instagram, on Facebook, and Twitter. We have great content on all those places, so don't miss out. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys online. So until next time, Bottoms up.